Que me encantes. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing great. I haven't been on here for a long time. I haven't been able to make any videos. I've been working extensively on, well, our books to revitalize our language. And that's taking all of my time besides being you know, a family man, working, those other things that we have to do in this world. So speaking about the books, I'm going to put the links here. We have, this is the English version. This is the first edition. There's actually a second edition. It has a red cover, same title, everything. So um, second edition is out. We had to change. I had to make some changes, I should say. I don't know why I keep referring to we, but I guess because I'm thinking of myself and Amazon <laughs> working together, it's available on Amazon. So as you can see, the Spanish edition has the shiny gloss and this had the matte. I made a mistake on that. Also, there were a few um, mistakes that occurred, typos, I guess, when it was uploaded. So I changed those as well. I added some footnotes. I wanted to fix the table of continent, talk contents. So just some structural things that I thought would make it more concise for you. We added some uh, sections as well with some additional information. Um, there were some things in here that I had left untranslated, like the vocabulary, which only had Spanish translation. So we put the English translation. Um, so it's available the second edition. And then the Spanish version here. Mayolito Chato, que viva nuestra lengua. It has a different title. It's the same book. It's just a different um different uh, cover as well. The title of this one's Mati Latoca, Mexicano, Mati Latoca, Mexicano. Let's speak Mexicano. So they're both the same content. This one didn't need a second edition because the English version, second edition, and this are the same. Um, the Spanish one is is pretty, pretty cheap, I think. It's uh, 15 bucks. And the English version is 20 bucks. So please feel free to support and get your copy. Um, a lot of people have been reaching out to me about the pronunciation, how to say these words, questions. Can we get some classes going? Those type of things. So yes, yes, yes. Quema, quema, quema. We're going to do all of those things. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the pronunciation. I'm going to do um, one video per week, each chapter. I think there's 42 chapters. So that's a lot of a uh, lot of videos. This will be the first one. It's going to be called pronunciation. I can't do it on TikTok, Instagram, all because they only give you this little time frame. And so it's going to take a while to do. So today, let's begin. I'll, let me share my screen here. And I'm sharing uh, the second edition. So if it looks a little different than your first edition. It's because I've added some things, uh, fixed a few typos. For example, on the pronunciation, I added examples in Mexicano, how to pronounce the words. So this video is for the first chapter. We're only going to be doing the pronunciation. And I'm going to go through it and give you some additional information as well. So if you have the book, you can always refer back to the video. If you can't afford the book, then here's the video for free. I hope you like it. So I'm really going to try to focus on um, putting out content this year. So if you can just, you know, like it, share it, follow it, and let's try to get, get the momentum going again. So let's begin with the pronunciation. Let me go ahead and stop my video so I don't distract myself. <clears throat> okay. The Mexicano alphabet is based on the Spanish alphabet, except for the seven sounds in Mexicano that Spanish lacks. For the sounds that Spanish lacks, various letters have been combined or used to represent the Mexicano phoneme or sound. If you can read Spanish, you should be able to read Mexicano fairly well. 
So the alphabet's based on Spanish alphabet because, well, Spanish speakers, people were the first ones to uh, record the la language with their alphabet, and then it was developed over time. Now, you may notice that the orthography that I use is a little different than some other Nahuatl communities. Um, there's no consensus on the orthography. Many uh, modern uh, day uh, writers, you should say, I should say, uh, from various communities have chosen to use other letters for various reasons. I have chosen to use this orthography because it's the older orthography. It has over 400 years of tradition. If you look at the um, historical records, it uses this orthography. So if you're a student, you're learning this orthography, it's easy for you to go and get a book on, let's say, classical Nahuatl or the colonial grammars from Jalisco, Guerra, Cortez y Cedeño, or all of the other materials and be able to still read it. So that's why I've chosen this orthography. And let's go over each sound. The letter A, the sound is ah, ah. Ah, this is similar to the English sound as in father. The A is in father. It's the same sound as in Spanish, padre. Examples in Mexicano, acal, acal, acal. This means read. The letter C, this has two different sounds depending on the placement of the letter. 90% of the time, it represents a K sound as in kite, kite. Our example here is Kali, Kali. This means house, Kali. If the letter C is found before an E or an I, the letter C represents an S sound. It's similar to the Spanish practice. So here are examples, Se, Se. This means A or one. And our second example is Siwal, Siwal, Siwal. This means woman. Real quick note about the Cali. You see a double L. It's not pronounced in Mexicano, it's not pronounced as a double L sound. Doesn't represent a long L. It's actually just a short L, just a regular one L. And I've written it as a double L, even though it should be written as an one L for reasons which I will explain in the chapter on nouns, which I believe is the second chapter. Side note, it is never to be pronounced as the double L L sound of Spanish, which they would pronounce it as a Y. So it is not Cali, it is not Cali, it is Cali, Cali, just, just in Mexicano. Um, CH, CH sound, this is as in chair, but with no puff of air. So when you say the word chair, you hear the ch, ch that's a puff of air. So we don't have the puff of air. This is more softer, I guess you could say. Our example here is chichik, 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 chik, chik, chichik. This means sour, something sour. Chicle, chicle, right? So in Mexican Spanish, we have this sound. Chicle, chihuahua, um, and a few other words. In a, what do they call it? Calo, in the uh, Chicano street talk <laughs> i guess you could call it that excuse me if that's the incorrect term but uh yeah like a chante like, let's go to the chante let's go to the house and uh those words all come from nahuatl so they have that retain that pronunciation more or less see you this represents the kw sound combined it represents one sound so this represents one syllable it does not represent the ku or ku or uh, anything that's like that. That sound does not exist in Nahuatl, um, uh, traditionally at least. Um, so I hear many people say that, especially, you know, within the danza world, where they'll say like, shiu um, tekutli. Miklan Tekutli, and so they'll say things like that. That's a 100% incorrect pronunciation. 
And I'm not going to get into all the pronunciation of that right now. So, but so you know, it represents the KW sound, which is similar to the English sound queen. So, like the QU in English, queen, but with no puff of air. So, it's not, you know, it's just a soft, little softer. Our example here is Quichlal, Quichlal, Quichlal means feces, feces. Eh, or E, I should say. E sound is the same as in Spanish E. And it's like the E in bet, bet in the in the in the English word. Our example here in English, or I mean, excuse me, in Mexicano is elos, 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 and this means corn cob, which is the same as in like uh, Mexican Spanish elote, elote, right? H. So what does this, this sound doesn't exist in Spanish or English, really. This sound, it, it um, well, kind of in Spanish, it, we could argue. Um, this sound represents an aspirated fricative glottal. So it's kind of like the J sound in Spanish, but softer. Um, we'll talk about that in note one. Sometimes it also represents a glo uh, just a regular glottal stop or occlusive, which is a uh, a pause in speech similar to the English uh-oh, uh-oh, when you pause. So sometimes it represents that as well. And we'll talk about that some more. Um, this H, though, when it comes in combination with the letter U, this represents one sound. Some people get confused by this. So H-U together is one sound. It represents a W sound. If you're a Spanish speaker, uh, you probably noticed it from like the word Chihuahua. Chihuahua has this. So in English, it would pronounce like a W, as in water, water. So our example here is waki, waki, waki. And this means something dry. The letter I, I, this is the same as in Spanish, E, and it's pronounced like the double E in feet in English, E, E. So here we have the word istak. Eastuck, Eastuck, white. This word is not pronounced Eastock, Eastock. It's not a, 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 that Z. We're going to talk about it. Shouldn't be pronounced like a Z as in Spanish or English. Um, the L, the L sound is in it's pretty much the same in English and Spanish, I think. It's pronounced as in lava, lava. Side note two L's, um, two L's do not represent a Y sound. Okay, here's another typo. See, do not represent a Y sound as in, as in Spanish, and it is usually just pronounced as one L in Mexicano. So when we write two Ls, it's really pronounced as one L in Mexicano. Um, some words you'll only see it as one L, always, as in exists example, huelic, 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 Welik, and this means tasty, something tasty, something that tastes good. Are your food so welik? You could say it like that. Um, this L, this is an L with a line through it. And this is referred to as a devoiced L sound. It's not found in English or Spanish. It is found in um, some other languages, such as Welsh which is, is represented as a double L in their sound, in their language. It's also found in um, Dene. Any Dene speakers out there, it's found in Dene as found in other, some of other indigenous languages as well. What this sound is, is a, it's basically like you're going to pronounce an L. This is how it's pronounced. It's kind of hard to pronounce. So you're going to pronounce the L, your tongue hits the, the back ridge of your mouth, right? Upper part of your mouth. But instead of releasing the air in the pronunciation, like what you would do with the regular L sound, la, that pronunciation comes out of your mouth once um, your tongue separates from the your upper gums, right? La. With this one, it you keep it there, and you release the 
the air through the sides of your tongue. It's called devoiced. The way you can practice this is you'll notice a devoiced sound does not cause any vibration in your throat because that sound is not being released. So it's devoiced. For example, put your hand on your throat, your fingers, you know, like you're check, checking your um, your arteries there in your neck and pronounce the letter L like with a, with a vowel. We'll, we'll use L-A, right? La, 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 lo, le, li. You'll notice that vibration. Do the same thing with without releasing the tongue from the gums and releasing it from the side of your tongue. La, le, li, lo. You'll notice you don't feel that vibration. And that's because um, it's a, well, because of the position of your tongue not being released. And we refer to that as a devoiced L. Our examples here are shali, shali, shali. Sometimes this is just pronounced as shal. And here, this means land. Here we have an example of a devoiced L and a voiced L together. Second example, shil, shil, shil. And this means fire. If you have a lot of trouble with this devoiced L sound, just pronounce it as an L. This is acceptable because in some communities surrounding us, um, that's how it's actually pronounced. So like if you're from um, Zapotlan, which is sometimes referred to as Sila Guzman, they usually pronounce it most of the time just as an L. If you're from Coastal Michoacan, it's always just pronounced as an L. Um, this sound is pretty much found in all instances where you will find the famous TL of, of a central Nahuatl. So, for example, even the word Nahuatl, you hear that sound, but in, 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 in our variant, we would say Nahuatl, Nahuatl, or Nahuatl, which is the regular L. M, M as in man, man, ma, ma. Man. Here our example is meshkal. Meshkal means magay and it also means uh, mezcal. In our variant, it means magay and a mezcal. And the word mezcal, mezcal actually comes from the word meshkal, mezcal. And so all you uh, history bus of 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 a uh, mezcal or those who love mezcal, it originated in uh, southern. Jalisco, Colima region. It's been proven now, still archaeologically proven that that's where it originates. And the word should be, in my opinion, pronounced uh, mezcal and not mezcal. Um, N, N. This is as in no, in English and Spanish, no, no. So, uh, our example here is nenepil, 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 nenepil. This means tongue. O, or O sound. This is like in the Spanish, O. So as in Spanish, uh, loco. I think most English speakers know that word, loco. Loco. So it's pretty famous. Um, our example here is ocol, ocol, ocol. And this means like a pine tree. In, in Mexican Spanish, we, we say ocote, right? Cote, that's where cote comes from, this word. Ocos. Uh, P, P, this is as in Spanish, padre, padre. Um, it's not really like the English because it doesn't have that puff of air. Puh. You know, like padres, like a, what's an English word with a puff of air? Um, people. People doesn't really have that puff sound. So it's more like the Spanish padre. So our example here is pechal, pechal, pechal. And this means a petate, which is a mat made of reeds or tuli. 
uh, depending on the region you're from, they may make the petate of different uh, materials. QU, this one's a confusing one for a lot of people. Um, so the QU does not like in the English QU, so it doesn't make that qua sound. Um, it represents a K, K sound, as in the English word cat or key. Um, our example here is kema, yes, and kemichpi. Kemichpi means a small mouse, small mouse, kemichpi. Kemichpi, those little tiny mice you see in your house sometimes, hopefully not. Um, R, R. So most variants of Nahuatl uh, traditionally did not have an R, including this one. This is like a, something that's just occurred. I don't know why, possibly from influence from our local, other local indigenous languages from our area that do have R's in their language, such as uh, Purepecha, um, Wirarica, um, Coca, other languages that have this R that are our neighbors and that we've associated with for thousands of years, or it may come from the Spanish influence. But this is not a true R. This sound represents a voiced alveolar tap and not a trilled R as in Spanish. Um, you can Google what is a, a alveolar tap, voiced alveolar tap, and what is a trilled R. If you need more information, um, so basically, a trilled R is like the Spanish, the famous R, like carro, you know, um, sound like in the world, like that. People say that, like, kind of, I think that's like it's more slang, though. Um, so it doesn't represent that that R sound is in Spanish or English. It's actually a sound between an L and R, an L and an R. Um, as an English teacher, I see like a lot of uh, Asians, Japanese specifically students of mine, they have a hard time pronouncing the R sounds. They pronounce it as an L. The reason they do is because these two sounds are actually pronounced in a very similar position. And there's just a slight difference. So the R here that we use in Mexicano is actually as if you were going to pronounce the L and then moving into an R. So it's not as strong. Here's our example. Lisarem, 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 Lisarem. This means a star. This means a star, Mexicano. And uh, our second one is Corishim, Corishim, Corishim. This means a lizard, a lizard. Um, you may say, hey, Bauchli, you said there's no cool sound, and I just heard you say Corishim. This is actually, this, the word's actually kwerishin, kwerishin, but because of a, a, a contraction of the pronunciation, I guess, this is the best way I can explain it, explain it, this word becomes pronounced like that. But the, the full word is actually kwerishin, kwerishin, but it's it's like kwerishin, kwerishin. Uh, the T, the T as an taco, taco. Everybody loves tacos, right? So T just like in taco. So here our example is tekpin, 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 flea, flea. So the word taco actually has a meaning in um in Mexicano. It means a uh, um. It can mean something folded in half. There's a big debate if the word taco that we eat comes from Nahuatl or not. I'm not going to get into that in here. TL. So this sound does not exist in English or Spanish. We're going to talk about them in the complementary notes three. Uh, in Mexicano, it's found sparingly. It's found in only a very few words, not very many. Um, I have my theories about why that is because mostly all surrounding variants do not have that sound. They either have an L, a D-voiced L, or a T. But in Tuxpan, we do find this TL sound in certain words, usually um, words that were for greetings or words that were adopted from 
um, central Nahuatl. You have to keep in mind that there was an influence of central Nahuatl speakers through in the region for 300 years. So, um, and people moved in from central Nahuatl speakers into the region. So there may have been that influence. Um, that's a, that's another subject for another day. But so, for example, I say with the D voice down because that's how you can say it as well. But uh, many people would say and this would be just like the regular TL in a in a in a central Nahuatl or Huasteca Nahuatl or other Nahuatl variants. But there's rules with in Mexicano we have rules where this sound may may exist or may not exist, which we'll talk about in note three. The T Z, the T Z sound. Or letters we write it as a tz it's actually should be more like a ts because remember the z does not represent a a true z of of spanish or english um it, and it represents one sound um this is a little different than um some of the other nahuatl variants but so it has two kind of different pronunciations the tz represents one sound start off by pronouncing a t and slide into pronouncing a S sound like in English, sese or tsunami, somewhat similar to that. In Mexicano, TZ is usually just pronounced as an S sound. So we usually just pronounce this as an S sound. And I don't have an ex example here. <clears throat> let's put one. Um, let's see. Metz. Metz. We'll put that as our example. This will be your, your thigh. I'll have to do that later. So I'm gonna put a capital L, mesk. This will be your thigh. And it was usually it's just pronounced mesk, mesk, and not mesk. <clears throat> um, you, the use. So you does not really exist in a, a true you does not re resist in in Nahuatl. Like I said, there's no ooh sound. This sound is between an O and a U sound approaching the sound of you, as in glue or boot, oot. So it's not really a U sound like in English or, or Spanish. It's more it's an O sound, but between an O and a U sound. So this word here, our example, I'm not going to really pronounce this. Su, suwal, 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 suwal. So it's kind of less of an U, kind of a O between those two sounds. It takes a lot of practice to say that. Um, anywhere that we see this, just this U sound, it's place where it's originally an O sound. Soal. So this so, soal, soal, soal. It's an like O sound first, but it's elevated itself up to almost a U sound. Um, traditionally, according to historians within uh, Tuxpan region itself, this was a way to distinguish between male and female speakers Female speakers would use the U, the more of a U sound. So we write it as a U. And it, uh, male speakers would use an O sound. It, obviously, that that um, I don't know if that was a later development, which I suspect it was. Um, and a, a few other things I suspect we'll talk about at another time. If you have any questions about anything I'm saying, put your comments down there. I will respond to you as soon as I can. Uh, you see, you see, this does not represent uk, as some people will pronounce it, does not represent a uk. It actually just represents the KW sound. So it represents the same, I'm going to put a side note here at the bottom. So it represents the CU sound, but just flip backwards. This was something that um, was done um by the original 
Spanish who recorded this, uh, the language. So they would write it as like CU. Sometimes they would write it as UC. Sometimes they would write it as CUH. Um, CUH is probably the best one because we know that the UH represents a W and that would represent specifically the, the KW sound. So how do you pronounce this? We're going to talk about this in note four a little bit more, but I will just tell you it's pronounced like a K followed by a soft W. So this word here for honey, neckly, neckly, neckly. If you cannot pronounce neckly, neckly, then you would have to pronounce it with a W followed by a K. You can do that. Neckly, neckly. So First example, K followed by W, neckly, neckly, neckly. Second example, neckly, neckly, neckly. Both of them are considered correct. <clears throat> Many modern variants don't have this sound, and even some local variants don't have it. In which case, the only letter that's pronounced is the the C, which is a K sound in this case. So neckly, neckly, neckly would be honey, honey. Luckily, in Mexicano, this is only found in a very few words. Very few. I think only two that I knew of. Neckly and delkly, lord and honey, or lord or sir. And uh, sometimes at the end of some vowels, but it usually takes on a different pronunciation, which we'll talk about. UH, this does not represent U. As I mentioned earlier, it's just a W sound. So as an English W sound, we'll have some more information on it in the complimentary note five, but it's a W sound. <clears throat> so for example, the word for eagle, quauhi, quauhi, quauhi. And the word for my wife, no see wow, no see wow, no see wow. So this is not no see wow, no see wow. No, it's not a oo sound. It's not a uh sound. It's a w sound. So English speakers, you think about the word wow, wow, right? W o w wow. It's kind of like that. So wow, wowly, wowly. Like my name is pronounced wowly. And sometimes this UH becomes devoiced in which you can't even hear it. So quahli. No see wah. But we're gonna still write it down to recognize that it's originally there. X. X is a little confusing for some people. It's not like the English X in English at all or the English X in Spanish. So it represents a sh sound, a sh sound, as in the word ship in English. So this word here, our example, shali, shali means sand, shali, shali, sand, shali. And again, that double L is not a long L. It's not, don't pronounce it, shayi. It's not like that. I see people mispronounce the X a lot. And, uh, it's funny because sometimes they're telling you about, um, you know, they're trying to like they're schooling you about something, educating you, and they're just butchering the language, which shows probably that they don't know what they're talking about, um, in my opinion. Z, the Z is like an S sound. So Z represents an S sound. It is never pronounced, pronounced as the English Zoom or Spanish Zorro. So it's not pronounced like a Z or of English or Spanish. It's so in our example here for the word for fly, sayol, sayol, sayol. And I'm kind of overemphasizing a little bit. Sayol, sayol. It's just an S sound. So in a way, we have three sounds in Mexicano that are all pretty much. Um, T, Z, Z, or two sounds, Z and T, Z, and they're usually just like an S sound. Oh, and sometimes uh, 
the C, right? C I C C I C E. These are also just S sounds. So in a way, I think uh, the modern orthography would be better, but be more simpler. But we have so much, uh, so much uh, history and stuff written using this orthography. It's kind of hard, especially for a person like myself, a little bit older, been working with the same orthography for, you know, twenty plus years. There are many Spanish loan words in Mexicano. The most prevalent being de, the word de, right? All Spanish loan words are more or less pronounced as in Spanish, although the accent may or may not shift to follow the rules of Mexicano. So we're going to see that accent. Well, what is the accent? Where's the accent in Mexicano? And I see a lot of people mis mispronouncing the words in Nahuatl because they're mispronouncing the accent where it should be. Sometimes they're doing really good, but it's just the accent that's throwing them apart. So let's talk about the um, our complimentary notes. Well, number one, this is the most hardest for a lot of people in the H, <laughs> just the H. So the H not to be confused with HU or UH represents an aspirated fricative glottal. In classical Nahuatl, this was realized as a satillo, satillo, or a glottal stop. However, in Mexicano, like many other modern variants of Nahuatl, this sound is represented as an aspirated fricative glottal. The pronunciation of the glottal fricative H varies from an S to an English H or Spanish J sound, and due to a kind of aspirated palatalization, it can be pronounced similar to the German Ike sound. So this rule applies to Mexicano, specifically Nahuatl from um, Jalisco region and surrounding region, I would say. Um, so what I'm talking about here pronounce, applies to that. So really quick, what did I say? It, it uh, varies, H varies from an S sound to an H sound. Um, to a J sound, the J and the H sound, these are kind of similar. Eng English H like hello, huh, huh. This is very much similar to the J of Jose, ho, oh, oh. So these two are pretty equivalent. This is a, I would call that the true uh, fricative. And then the S is just a peculiarity in the language where sometimes people will pronounce this as an S, almost like an S sound. Um, I'm going to give you an example here. Let's go down here. Here's the word for far away, right? And we have two pronunciations. So sometimes it's just pronounced uh, Weka or Weska. Yeah, so it actually has uh, two pronunciations. I need to add that there. So Weka. Wesca, Wesca. The glottal stop pronunciation will be Wesca, Wesca, Wesca. And as I mentioned earlier, sometimes it has that that uh, German, kind of like the German Ike. This is pretty much like a K sound. This sound, this is a, to pronounce the glottal stop like this. Is very common more towards the northern part of uh, Jalisco, uh, north of Lake Chapala. And um, they would write it as, actually write it as a C. <laughs> and we see that with this sound here. La, Shatua, 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 Shatua. That's almost like a K, almost like a K. <laughs> All right, so so how does one know which sound the H corresponds to? The simplest answer is that the most commonly pronounced as an English H or Spanish J. So the simplest answer is that the most commonly pronounced pronunciation is as an English H or J. So here's a typo. I have to fix that. It is only found in intermediate position or at the end of a word. In the middle position, it can vary from a uh, German 
Ike sound or the K sound, which is more or less a type of K sound to an S sound. And we have a footnote here. So in middle position, you may have, there's some words that were pronounced like that. Shlaktua, 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 or shlaktua. My suggestion is pronounce it just as a, as the, the J sound. Uh, this is consistent with the more standardized local variants. So what happened was um, when the language was last recorded, it was basically in its death throes. And so there was, you, we get a lot of variation. You know, we may have recorded somebody who didn't speak the language for many years. And so there may have been a, a distortion in some pronunciation, or we get examples where survivors kind of commingled and the languages kind of mixed. And in my in my opinion, um, this is what similar of a situation. So in the northern part, we have a more of a of a northern Jalisco Colima. I mean, excuse me, north of Chapala, we have that tendency for it to be pronounced as a K sound, and towards the south. It's pronounced as a J sound, and where these two places met, sometimes there was a commingling of these two pronunciations. So, last example, no pelo. Here, this is just that that fricative, that J, no pelo, no pelo, no pelo, my child. This is how we say my child. Um, note number two: there exists in this dialect a devoiced l phoneme i use the word dialect in the broad sense of um, a variation of the language so don't come at me it's not a dialect from a linguistic perspective every language has dialects and nahuatl is made up of many different dialects or variants i like to use the word dialect to refer to a specific region and then within this region, this dialect, there are what I call variants. And then within these variants, there are subvariants. This is a terminology I use, many other people do as well. I don't mean it in the same sense as, you know, racist people who say, oh, hablas dialecto, stuff like that, referring to indigenous languages and di dialects, no. So the de-voiced L phoneme, the de-voiced L sound is not found in English or Spanish. It is the de-voiced L of Welsh and also found in Navajo or Diné. It is found where, in fact, I want to put Diné in there instead of Navajo. It is found where other Nahuatl variants have a TL phoneme. In most variants of Western Nahuatl, the TL is found as either a T or L, L, devoiced L, or a mix of them. The L can appear in initial, intervocalic, final position and form consonant clusters. This sound takes practice and a little time to master. I've already explained how to pronounce pronounce this sound. So I'm not gonna do that again. Um, I will pronounce these words though again. Example, shlal, 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 earth. This means earth. No peshal, no peshal, no peshal. My my petate, my mat. Shil, shil, shil. Fire. Soar, soar, soar. Woman. Dish, 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 dish. Flower. Uh, the TL, voiced alveolar lateral fricative, is not found very often in Mexicano. I put the linguistic term for people that want, they can look that up and get more information. Where it is found, it is found in free variants with the voiced L. So wherever we do find a DTL sound in Mexicano, you also find the variant devoiced L. In free variants means that you can use either one. However, the TL is only found at the beginning of monosyllabic containing only one syllable words or in middle position. So what that means, a monosyllabic is basically a vowel plus a consonant 
<clears throat> so it's only found in the beginning of words that are monosyllabic, which there's only maybe one or two, three maybe at, at best. So it is never found at the end of a word. Never. So you'll never find this at the end. You'll never find a TL. And is most mostly found in greetings for the day and the terms adopted from Central Nahuatl during colonial times. So basically, the only time you're going to see a TL is in middle position or words that are monosyllabic containing one syllable. So here we have like the word kish, kish. So here you find this is I this is probably clish clish. This is probably the only uh example I know like this. And then there's another one. No, this is the only word I know, fire, where you find this example. So I call it an irregularity. And then the good morning, kemitlanes, 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 or kemitlanes, kemitlanes. And so you can use it either or the TL or the voiced L with these examples. Um, note four, the UC sound is a difficult to pronounce and for most people to grasp. Although it is traditionally spelled UC, it is actually represents a KW sound at the beginning of word or before a vowel, it is spelled CU. When it is at the end of a noun, stem, or predicate form of the verb, it is difficult to pronounce. Luckily, it is only found in two nouns in Mexicano and is very rare at the end of verbs. Sometimes UC is also spelled CU or CUH, but in this book, it is only spelled UC. To pronounce the UC, one must pronounce the K and the W at the same time. If one finds this difficult, you can at least resort pronounce the W in the front of the K. Nelkli, Nelkli, honey. But you have to make sure that the W doesn't become a vowel. So it doesn't become a U sound. No, it doesn't become its own um sound separate from the K, they have to become, stay together. Remember that the UC should never be pronounced uk or ku or uk, 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 ku, ku. Never. Examples. So using the, the W before K pronunciation, niksauk, niksauk, niksauk. I closed it, niksauk. Using the other K before the W as one sound, Nixak, Nixak, Nixak. Um, I closed it. He smelled it. Kinelk, Kinelk, Kinelk. The other pronunciation, Kinek, Kinek, Kinek. Honey, Nelk. Nelk, 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 Nek, Nek, Nek. Sir, this this word is rare. The form Deco is more common. Delkli, 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 Delkli. I closed it. Nixauk, Nixauk, Nixauk. Nixauk, Nixauk, Nixauk. So you see, even my own pronunciation, I tend to favor the W before K. That's just a, a habit, but it's it's uh, it's fine. Uh, UH is pronounced as a W. Many people make the mistake of pronouncing this as U, O, or U. At times, the U, the UH, W becomes devoiced. So... When it has that little circle at the bottom, that means it's devoiced. That means you don't really hear it. Devoiced means you don't hear it. It's really not audible, especially at the end of a word, in which case it's not very audible and hard to hear. So here we say, melaukan, 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 straight. When it's devoiced, this will be pronounced melaukan, melaukan, melaukan. Siwawelti, siwawelti, 
Siwawelti is the sister. The voice is Siwawelti. 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 Nichio. 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 I made it. Nichi. 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 I made it. These take practice. Accent. So this is the often confused by many people. Every Mexicano word is made up of a syllables. It's made up of syllables. Every vowel creates a new syllable. For example, no Nancy, my mother is made up of three syllables. No nan sin. One syllable of each word is pronounced more emphatically and in a higher pitch than the others. So what is a syllable? Here, a syllable is a noun plus a vowel. I mean, excuse me, a consonant plus a vowel or a consonant, vowel, consonant. So no is a first consonant, vowel. Nan is consonant, vowel, consonant. And sin is consonant. TZ is one consonant, vowel, consonant. How do you know this? This takes a little practice, but it's pretty simple to understand once you start um, practicing more. And we're going to create some, um, when we do the lessons, when we actually do classes, we're going to create homework to help you learn that process more. The stress or accent is placed on the second to last, and I never pronounced this word correctly, penultimate syllable of a word, penultimate. I think I pronounced it right. Monosyllabic words such as al, water, are obviously accented on their only syllable. Here are the, some examples to help you recognize where the accent is placed and how syllables are formed. The accented syllable is underlined. So second to last syllable, tomawak, tomawak, tomawak. This is something thick or something fat. Tomawak, tomawak. So something thick or fat. Koyimi, koyime, 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 koyime. This means a pig. Kual, 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 snake. So you, here you see uh, where those words are pronounced. I underlined them. And you could practice that. Oh, here's another example. No Nancy. No Nancy. No Nancy. You may hear that I'm not really pronouncing the and at the word because it's usually not even pronounced. And it's used so we will refer to that as a devoiced and at the end. It's usually not pronounced at the end of words in Mexicano and many other uh now what variants. So that's the end of um. Our chapter here on pronunciation, I hope it that helped everybody. <clears throat> Let me um, come back on. Hopefully that helped you. If you had any questions, free feel, feel free to put your comment or your question here at the bottom, and I'll do my best to answer them. <clears throat> um, thanks, everybody. Pampadios. And I will see you next time. Timotaske.